This is an ongoing situation, so please bear with me. So, a little background. My family owns a farm with a few businesses on the property, an ice cream shop, farm store, etc. And we have lots of land and various barns and outbuildings on the property. This is in a quiet, affluent community in New England. Small town kind of deal where the cops work really hard to give out speeding tickets. I'm sure you get the picture. To the right of our property is a duplex that is designated as low-income housing. In my state, each town and city is required to offer a certain percentage of housing as such. We have always gotten along with our neighbors, both in the duplex and on the other side. Recently, however, our sweet long-term neighbors who lived on the side of the duplex closest to us moved out of state. The new folks that moved in there are really, really creepy. So far, we have caught them in our tractor barn at 2 a.m. on a Saturday, walking around in our driveway at 2 a.m., spray-painting what looks like a gang sign on every telephone pole in the vicinity, and they hang random raw chicken parts from string in a tree in their yard. Additionally, some of the kids have been caught shooting their BB guns at our store after closing, thank goodness. They don't really seem to understand boundaries, as we have politely told them that ours is private property, and to please not trespass, but they still do. There seems to be a lot more people living in the duplex than the lease agreement states I believe four people is the maximum. There are at least two guys in their mid-thirties, always dressed in wife beaters and basketball shorts. There are at least four kids, ranging in age from two-ish up to early teens. I've seen one woman on the property, who I assume is the mother of some, of the kids. I'm afraid of coming off as a snob, but I am also worried about these people. They are weird, like really, really weird. It's a bit unnerving to have them next door, as we keep chickens, ducks, and goats on the farm as pets. Any suggestions of how to deal with this all? I just randomly remembered or thought about it for the first time in a while and thought it would be fitting for here. For context, the apartments I lived in at the time had eight units total. There were two buildings with four units each, the bottom ones you had to walk down about six steps, they weren't ground level, and the upper ones you had to walk up about six stairs, also not ground level. The two buildings faced each other with a sidewalk pathway and a little courtyard in between the two buildings. All eight units' living room windows faced the courtyard area. I lived in one of the upper units. It was also at the end of a residential street, so not a of of people or traffic coming through. So this happened in November 2013. I had literally just brought my newborn son home from the hospital. He was on a Billy SP, bed for jaundice, and needless to say I was already a nervous wreck. The second night I had him home, I hear a knock at my door around 11 p.m. I looked through the peephole, and there was a woman standing at my door, and I know she wasn't one of my neighbors. No way in hell was I answering because I had my newborn, my four-year-old daughter, and their dad who is absolutely not a tough guy lol. She knocked for about five minutes and stopped. I went and checked the peephole, and she was gone. For whatever reason I peeked through the blinds, and this lady was standing in the courtyard just staring up at my window. Evidently she saw me because she came back to the door and started knocking again. At this point my baby daddy suggested maybe her car was stuck, or she was stranded and needed to use a phone. I wasn't having it and didn't answer because why would she not go to the neighbor's doors? And why would she stand in the middle of the courtyard in a snowstorm staring at my window after I didn't answer the door? It didn't end there. The next night around the same time I hear another knock at the door, but this one was pounding hard like a cop. Went and checked the peephole and it was covered. I stood at the peephole for a minute watching, and the person took his hand off the peephole. His head was down so I couldn't see his face, but he pounded on the door again and covered the peephole back up with his hand. Baby daddy chalked it up to it being one of the neighbor's friends messing with them and got the wrong apartment. But I was sufficiently creeped out and once again didn't answer the door. I wish I had a resolution to the story, 
but nothing ever came of it. I didn't call the cops, and it never happened again. I still think about it a lot, though, wondering if it was a coincidence or if they knew each other and were planning something sinister, and what would have happened if I'd answered the door to either of them. It's a small town. I was living in a fairly secluded area. I'm also a very private person, and not many people aside from family and really close friends knew where I lived. The people that did know where I lived knew damn well. If you didn't call or text to let me know you were coming, the door wasn't getting answered. The burning question is always who the hell were these people, and what did they want? I've really been wanting to share this story for some time now, but haven't really found a good outlet for it until stumbling across this sub. The other people involved don't really like talking about it, it's upsetting, and doesn't make us look good, but I just think it's a great awful story at this point. Sorry, this is going to be a long one. Names changed to protect personal info. About five years ago, my wife and I went on a weekend camping trip with our two closest friends, another married couple. The campsite is just outside of Yosemite and absolutely beautiful. The beauty of it and creepiness of it is that you take a dirt road for about an hour and a half off the main road to get to it. It's extremely secluded, but never felt threatening. It's a really popular campsite, so there were always people around, especially in the summer when this occurred. The first day was awesome. I don't remember exactly what we did, but I remember having a great time. The campsites are all fairly close together, and usually separated by various shrubs, etc. I remember we were all pretty pumped about the site we got as there were no neighbors on one side just forest, and no one occupying the site closest to us. This is uncommon, as these campgrounds stay fully booked throughout the summer. Day two started normally. We had breakfast, then headed to the lake for a couple hours. The lake was about a 20-minute hike from the main campground. When we got back around two-ish, we noticed that the site next to us now had a silver rental car parked on it. We didn't think much of it and went about making a fire to cook with. At some point we noticed the occupant of the site next to us, a pretty average looking white dude, maybe early 40s. Honestly, he was so average looking that it's hard to even picture him. We all immediately caught on to the fact that he was constantly looking over at us. My friend Dave even made a comment to me under his breath. You notice this guy keeps looking over here. I remember feeling a little uncomfortable, as we were all still in bathing suits from the lake, but made a conscious effort to ignore it. It's worth mentioning that we were a little buzz or drunk. Not out of control or anything, just feeling pretty good. Throughout the afternoon and into the evening, we continued to notice the guy constantly looking over at us. In hindsight, Dave or I should have called him out. This story doesn't make us look great, but whatever. I had been stressed at work prior to the trip, and really didn't want to let some creepy dude throw off my relaxed vibe stupid I know. The alcohol coupled with the fact that we honestly kind of felt bad for him led us to not confront him. Yes, it was very creepy, but I told myself he was just an awkward, lonely dude. Aside from the staring, there were a couple of mildly weird incidents that occurred leading up to the very weird stuff. The first was that, at some point, he left his sight to go do whatever. While he was gone, a girl, probably in her mid-twenties our age, walked by and snapped a picture of his license plate. I remember asking her if she needed anything, and she smiled awkwardly and kept walking. Dave and I both thought this was odd, but were preoccupied with beer. Later into the evening, around seven-ish, the camp host was doing her rounds checking people in, she checked us in and moved on to him. I remember us all eavesdropping intently to hear what they were saying. I think we just wanted to hear what this creep sounded like. He kept asking questions about the bathhouse. We did know there was a bathhouse, or even what a bathhouse was, but he had like a hundred different questions about it. Where is it? How late is it open? Is it private? Maybe not that weird but in context, definitely odd. 
The sun started to go down. We were all drunk, so we weren't too concerned with creepy dude anymore. At one point we went for a walk and noticed him snooping around what we believed to be the bathhouse. Now I would call out this kind of behavior. But again, I was drunk and five years stupider at the time we all laughed and talked about how creepy he was. Back at the site, we continued to drink and have a good time. At one point, the guy started eating beans aggressively out of a can in the light of his single lantern, no fire. He looked us while doing it, and Dave and I kind of snickered to each other at how weird it was. I don't think the girls noticed. Eventually, we decided to go to bed. I think the guy had left his sight at this point. I kind of remember us making jokes like, I better not wake up to that dude looking in our window, haha. -ha. My wife and I slept in our SUV with the seats folded down. Dave and Sarah slept in the camper shell of their truck. I remember feeling a little creeped out as I fell asleep, but shrugged it off. At around 2.30 a.m., both my wife and I were jolted awake by we thought was a women's scream. We both looked at each other and asked if the other had heard that. We came to the conclusion that it was probably people at some other site being loud, and decided to go back to sleep. As I was trying to go back to sleep, I started feeling very unsettled. I decided to get out of the car and take a look around. I cracked my door, trying to be as quiet as possible. I had gotten about one leg out of the car when I heard faint, but direct whispering coming from Dave and Sarah's camper shell about four feet away. I froze and then heard it again. I eventually realized that they were trying to tell me something. I whispered back, what? I then very clearly heard Dave say, start you car. I instantly realized that something was wrong, so rather than ask questions, I climbed back into my car to start it. Right away, Dave and Sarah bursted out the back of the camper and frantically jumped into my car. They told me to drive. They were too freaked out to explain anything, so I just drove kind of aimlessly. Eventually, I pulled over, figuring we were far enough away from whatever had freaked them out. Finally, Sarah calmed down enough to tell us what had happened. As she put it, she was woken by a light coming from Creepy Dude's campsite. Apparently, he had set up lanterns and flashlights to spotlight himself, completely naked, masturbating in the direction of our cars. She also mentioned that he was flaccid and not able to finish. A gross detail, but I feel it's important. It gets weirder. At some point, he stoked and turned off the lights and began using a flashlight to signal across a small ravine that the campsites backed up to. I'm talking like Morris code or something. Across the ravine, an old RV began using its headlights to signal back. Dave was awake by this point. I questioned them on this detail, and they both said it was very clear that they were communicating. After that, he turned off his light. Keep in mind, it is absolutely pitch black out there at night. After a few minutes, they heard footsteps around their car, followed by a hard tap on the window. That is what caused Sarah to scream, hence, waking me up. At this point, I decided that we needed to call the police. The problem was, there was absolutely zero cell service at the campsite. Furthermore, it was about an hour and a half up a service road from what was already a very remote part of the state, so leaving at night wasn't an option. We decided the best course of action was to alert the camp host. We drove around, and eventually found the trailer she lived in. She was understandably confused to be woken up at 3.30 in the morning, but was responsive. She mentioned that the guy was really weird when she checked him in and called the police on her satellite phone. Apparently, there was massive wildfire burning that weekend, and the police said they wouldn't be able to send anyone out until sunrise. The camp host said there really wasn't anything she could do beyond calling the police. It really sucked hearing that. Basically, we were stuck in our car in the pitch blackness, while some crazy masturbating dude was out and about not to mention whoever was in that RV. One more really weird thing happened. At around 4 a.m., we were all still sitting in my car when a man in a hood walked right up to the window. The second I noticed him, I turned on my engine and headlights. He ran off into the trees. We all sat in my car until sunrise. 
Once his was light out, we went back to the site to pack up our things. His car was still there, with blankets hung in all the widows. The whole thing just felt gross, and we wanted to get the hell out of there, so we quickly packed up and left. A couple of hours after we left, I got a call from the police. They said they went out to the campsite and questioned the guy. He said he was simply showering. The cop told me there was nothing he could do. It was our word against his. He also questioned the people in the RV. They said they didn't know what he was talking about, but mentioned that, and I quote, a very rude camper screamed in the middle of the night. The whole experience with the police was frustrating. I tried following up. I even tried getting help from a family member who's a sheriff, but even he said there wasn't anything they could do unless that particular police chief really wanted to investigate this guy. So that's the story. I learned a lesson about being polite when someone is making you uncomfortable. Nowadays, I am much more aggressive with creepy people. I also know it's easy to hear this story and wonder why Dave or myself didn't just confront the guy, especially when he's literally masturbating at the car you're sleeping in. I don't know. I wish we would have showed more courage, but honestly, it was really scary in the moment. I'm okay with admitting that. Now I think it's kind of funny just how stupid we were and how bizarre the whole situation was. I also feel fortunate that no one was hurt. Clearly we were dealing with a very messed up individual who had accomplices. I can only imagine what their end goal was and what they would have been capable of doing. I also think that they had done shit like this before. I just really wish the police could have done something. My next door neighbors are creeps, or at least one of them is. The people who live directly next to me. On the other side of the fence in our yard is a pair of older women. We assume they're a couple. Last summer, when my boyfriend was building our outdoor shower, one of the old ladies would watch us through the fence because she didn't like the noise of us hammering nails. During 4th of July, she paced up and down the fence with a drum because she didn't like the loud fireworks. The morning after the 4th, she picked all of the debris out of her yard and lined it up on the fence. She has done this two Fourth of Julys in a row minus the drums. Just a couple days ago, we were having a fire in our fire pit, and she tried to get our roommate's attention to have us put out the fire, and when we didn't, she stood off in her yard, staring over the fence. I can see over the fence from my boyfriend and mine's bedroom, so I spotted her though the window, and we made eye contact. She moved a little further into her own yard and behind some trees like she was hiding. I spotted her a second time through the trees a few minutes later, and then she left to go back into her house. This is 100% true. So, I live in a small block of flats alone in England. I have lived here for about two years. Last year, a young couple and their newborn baby moved in next door. They seemed nice, but on the whole, I kept to myself, just exchanging passing neighborly pleasantries like hello and good evening. Fast forward to a few weeks ago. I'm enjoying some alone time, if you get what I mean. And all of a sudden, I get a knock at my door. This freaks me out as it was 3 a.m., I quickly pause that evening's entertainment, cover up somewhat, and answer the door. It was my male neighbor in his dressing gown and visibly highly intoxicated. He then explains to me that he has lost his keys to his flat on the grass out front. Not thinking too much of it, I offered him assistance in finding the keys using my phone as a torch. Without luck, he then asked if he could come and sit inside my flat until his partner wakes up. Again, not thinking too much of it, I invited him in. After several awkward minutes, he asked if he could use the bathroom. With that, he takes himself to the bathroom and returns with his trousers still undone. This made me quite uncomfortable, and I informed him of the fact that his trousers were undone. Several more increasingly awkward minutes passed, 
and he informed me that he was watching me through my window enjoying my alone time, and he wanted to see if I wanted some company, to which I profusely declined. With that, I politely asked him to leave. On his way out, he asked me if I was sure I wouldn't like a blow job. Again, I declined and hurried him out of the door, to where he begged me not to tell his partner, who was sleeping in the flat directly next door. Ever since, I've done my best to avoid seeing them. When I was about 10 years old, we lived next to a lady who was a bit strange. She had long black hair and really pale skin. She didn't come out of her house much, so we called her the Vampire Lady. We didn't know her name because she was so quiet, but whenever someone walked by her house, she would always stare at them. The lady's house always looked dark inside, even at night, and sometimes my mom or brothers saw strange things happening there. We weren't sure what was going on. We just noticed weird lights flickering like in a horror movie about Frankenstein. One night, my friend Jess came for a sleepover. I told Jess about the weird lady across the street. Jess thought it would be a good idea to go see what was happening in the house when everyone else was asleep. I didn't really want to, but I said yes. I knew we had to be super quiet because my mom wakes up easily. She wouldn't let me go out in the dark at my age. Somehow, we sneaked outside without making any noise. Now we just had to cross the street to get to the house. Jess tried to look inside through the windows, and as soon as she did, she grabbed my arm. Come on, let's go now, she said quietly but firmly. What's wrong? We just got here, I asked as she pulled me, running back across the street. She didn't tell me what she saw until we were back inside the house. Once she locked the door, she said that when she looked through the window, she saw something that looked like a video camera with a small blinking light. I said we should just go to bed and talk about it in the morning. I wish I could say that's where the story ended, but it didn't. Around three in the morning, Jess and I were still trying to sleep when suddenly Jess started screaming. I had a bunk bed, so I climbed up to see what was happening. That's when I saw the camera lens from earlier, now looking into our bedroom window. My mom and brothers rushed into my room with the lights on, which must have scared the person with the camera. So I told my mom that someone was looking inside. My mom grabbed a bat from my brother's room and went outside, looking around for a few minutes. When she came back, my mom asked us what the person looked like. Jess and I could only describe the camera lens. We didn't see the person. But in our hearts, we felt it was the lady from across the street, even though we didn't have any proof. My mom was mad that we waited until the morning to tell her how we knew it was the woman. Since then, we weren't allowed near her house, and I still sometimes have bad dreams about it. I recently moved to a condominium in a rural area because of cheaper living expenses. It's really hard to see the building since it's so hidden in the trees. I thought this was weird because I never really lived in such place, but a weirder thing happened a few weeks ago. So I live in a second floor of the building, and there are two or three neighbors living on that floor. One of them is an old man who generally takes care of the condo, and he gives me that creepy vibe to me. One time after I was done with my grocery shopping, I felt someone was staring at me from upstairs, so I briefly took a glimpse at it, and it was that old man who was watching me. I felt a little creeped out by him, but I told myself that it was probably nothing. So as I went upstairs with my grocery, he came out as if he purposely timed himself to have a small, friendly neighbor chat with me. I was being polite so I did end up having the chat, after the convo ended, I went to my apartment unit a little chilled out from the experience and joking to my sibling about how he secretly may be a murderer. For instance, our unit trembles sometimes for no reason so we joke about how he's burning corpses in a secret unit outside that we found for real whenever that happens. Honestly, he seems to be the person who has a little conversation with every neighbor. But I don't know why he gives me that creepy vibe.
Hey, let me say that to whoever is reading this to be very weary of your neighbors. When I was 12, I used to go to a summer camp with my cousin who was six at the time. Let me backtrack a bit. My cousin is actually my mom's cousin because my grandmother's sister had her only kid, so even though I was older than her, she was my older cousin. We both frequented our great-grandmother's house and ventured to the camp from her house. Now there was an odd neighbor next to my great-grandmother's house, let's call him Mike. My family had told me that he was a creep and had a history of people uncomfortable in the neighborhood to the point where people purposely avoided the street he lived on. Mike was also a man of very few words, and he was older I'd say in his 50s, 60s, as he had visible gray hair. So one day me and my cousin W will call her Susan were walking to the summer camp when I felt someone following us. So without alarming Susan, I quickly looked over my shoulder, and at first didn't see anything until I noticed Mike walk from behind the car. I quickened my pace and pulled Susan along and cut through a walkway to see him pick up the pace. I couldn't scare my cousin so I kept moving darting between different pathways while trying to outpace Mike. Knowing that I was a few minutes away from the camp, I told my cousin to go through the gates while I turned to confront him. He stopped and looked at me and turned back. I immediately reported this to my parents and Susan's mom. They confronted him, and he denied any wrongdoing, and we threatened to call the cops. Now it's 2020, and he's long dead with his house being boarded up and tore down a relic if a time period. Me and my cousin are both adult now, and that always haunts me, the fear of having to protect myself, and my cousin brought out the fight or flight response. Always, always watch your neighbors, you never know who's watching you. we really need to be cautious with people around us. In our old neighborhood, there's a new guy who rented the house in front of us. He's tall and look around like he's in his 40s, and I was 13 or 14 that time when we crossed paths. He would always go in my way purposely, even when he knows that I saw him already. One time, I was in a store, and he suddenly hold my shoulders. I was really scared, and I shouted at him, and told him that he's stupid for doing that, and for always purposely crossing my path, even if he already saw me. He just laughed and told me it was a mistake, and one time I saw him in the mall, he still crossed my path again purposely. Good thing we left that neighborhood when I was 15. Some people are creepy, really, and thinks what they're doing is okay. When I lived in Tucson, I rented a home in a retirement community. I had a Harley Davidson and was living with my dog. A neighbor had a motorcycle as well, but was too old to ride and would stand outside and wave when I would ride by and take off. He lived just across from me. The neighbor next to him said he was a really nice guy and could use a friend and someone to help out from time to time with things, seeing as he was older and I was in my early 30s. One day, I'm on my ladder cutting branches on my mesquite tree. He asks if I can swing by afterwards and cut a few of his branches as well. I gladly said yes. We got to chatting and his wife of nearly 70 years had passed about five years prior, and he said he'd been sad and lonely without her. He also told me he was a teacher for many years before retiring. As we parted ways, he asked if I could come by sometime and help him plug in a Blu-ray player he had purchased. I told him no problem. I came by to help install the Blu-ray player a few days later, and he was making something to eat. He asked if I wanted to have a bite and if I was into whiskey. I told him I was an avid Jameson drinker in my 20s, so he poured me some whiskey on the rocks. As we had some birdily pasta before hooking up the Blu-ray player behind his TV that was hard to get to in an odd entertainment center, he asks me, do you like wrestling? I have a good friend that lives near the base of MT. Lemon. He's about my age. Sometimes we have some of the younger guys over there, and he has mats in the house. Everyone takes off their shirts and pants and wrestles. It's a lot of fun. Um, um. What the F? 
I told him that's not something I'm interested in. I became extremely uncomfortable. I decided to very quickly hook up the Blu-ray player so I could go home immediately. As I'm behind the TV and can't see him, he starts asking me if I enjoy watching pornography. That he has pornography videos on DVD that he can share with me. I almost smashed my head into the top of the entertainment center, just as I was plugging in the HDMI cable, and he was asking me such a bizarre question. As quickly as humanly possible, I got out from behind the TV so I could see him and ensure I was safe from anything happening. Thankfully, he was just standing behind the couch, 15 feet away, watching while I finished. I told him, I'm not into that kind of thing. I've got to go. I quickly made a dash for the door and told him goodbye. From that point forward, I never interacted with him. My damn motorcycle was very loud so every time I'd leave, which was often, he'd hear it, come outside and watch while I rode off waving at me. When I'd come home late in the evenings, I could see in his front window where his computer and monitor were, and I swore there were videos of women playing on his monitor with his blinds wide open while he sat there. I never stopped long enough to see very many specifics about what he was watching. Considering he was a teacher in his former life in Minnesota, his completely bizarre and disgusting questions really frightened me about whether or not he might have been involved with younger people in the past. This was years ago. Those memories still freak me out these days when I think back. So, we moved to a small mountain town in southwest Colorado. Our house used to be the crack house, or the drug house, a couple years before the people who lived here before us. One day, about three years ago, a very skinny man came into our backyard looking around, as some of our neighbors said. Everyone was either at school or at work, so none of us really saw it, besides me. I saw the guy when he came back. We live right on an alleyway, and when he heard me come into the house, he left and walked into the alleyway. I think he came around expecting the old drug dealer tenants to be here. But when he was discovered, he got the hell out of there. Apparently one of our neighbors called the cops, but nothing significant came out of that. I'm glad I never had to approach him. I self-renovated my side of an old, cheap, and very scary duplex in college before moving in. It was one house that had been split into two, and the other side was still painted completely black inside when this group of guys moved in. So many things happened when they lived there, but two stand out twenty-plus years later. My electric bill suddenly quadrupled. Turns out they had figured out how to power their side by plugging into mine through the shared attic. Soon after they moved, I noticed a small hole in the ceiling above my bed. Turns out they had one in my shower too. People usually talk about crazy cat ladies, but I had a crazy cat man living next to me at one point. This man had a ton of cats. At night we'd have at least 20 polydactyl cats laying on our porch. We'd always find dead kittens or cats in our driveway, under or by our porch, and in our backyard. He had two basement windows that were knocked out, and he old car hoods over those windows which left enough room for the cats to go in and out freely in his house. He also burned all of his trash in his backyard. One day we had the police and firemen banging on our door because someone had called and said our car was on fire. It wasn't. He was just burning trash in a barrel so close to our car. It looked like it was on fire. He got a lot of police complaints, but that guy did not give aff. I had been sitting in my backyard when a cop came by his house complaining about the smoke from his trash burning. You got a warrant, mother FR? This is my G-damn property. If I want to burn shit, I'm going to burn shit. Now get the F off my property until you have a warrant. We lived next to him for about a year. 
Thankfully, the worst thing our new neighbor does is mow her lawn three times a week and makes us look bad. Two neighbors at two different neighborhoods. The first were abusive parents, and we accidentally picked up their baby monitor on my family's baby monitor across the street. It was horrible what was happening. Second neighbor was only a temporary neighbor. Some type of witch or something, paranormal stuff started happening straight up poltergeist angie spirit time. Was pretty crazy. Wheelchair lady. She lived across the street from us, and I think just sat and stared out her window until she saw me go in the front yard. She was elderly, would never leave and made the wise choice to smoke with her oxygen on. She would come out and just stare and watch me do yard work. She would open the gate and just come into the backyard because the neighbors who lived there before let her. I hated going outside. Eventually we established some boundaries. Her son was also a registered S offender and pretty damn sketchy but he was always kind and helpful towards us. It was a weird area. Not really creepy, but I never figured this one out. For context, this block of flats was pretty crappy and run down and wasn't in the best area, but it wasn't the worst. I stayed there for two years, I noticed pretty quickly after moving in that my neighbor was a bit sketchy. He always got picked up and dropped off in an expensive blacked out Mercedes weird because this wasn't a nice area. And I once opened my close door right as a stranger was handing him a roll of 20s about 2 inches thick. He stashed it and gave me a really dirty look. Whatever, I just assumed he was dealing, but if he stayed out my way I didn't care. I put a ring camera outside my door and started to notice a lot of extra weird activity. His flat was directly across from mine and I quickly got flooded with notifications several times an hour, all through the night. It seemed like there was that one guy that lived there permanently plus, there was always between one four additional men in their thirties or forties staying there with him at a time, but only for maybe one six weeks before they would disappear and then new guys would take their place. They all seemed to have keys and never arrived or left at the same time as each other, and wouldn't leave the flat for long. If I passed any of them in the close, they never seemed to speak any English or understand me at all and tried very hard not to make eye contact with me. Also, when a new guy would move in, I would never see them move in any boxes or belongings. He would just show up on their own with a key and then disappear weeks later. Only other things I noticed about them was that I never had any noise coming from their flat. No talking, TV, music, nothing. That always creeped me out because the walls were horribly thin, and I could always hear every other neighbor talking or watching TV so clearly that you could pick up what show they were watching. But this flat was always completely silent. All the men that moved in or left fit a very similar profile age, sex, race, and had the same mysterious routine. My best guess was that it had something to do with illegal immigration because in the two years I was there I'd guess over 60 guys total came or went, but I never did find out. One day they all disappeared including the permanent guy, but I never saw any furniture or boxes being moved out. About a month after the police came to my door looking for one guy in particular, I didn't know him by name, but they showed me a photo and I recognized him as one of the many temp guys. They wouldn't say why they were looking for him. Me and my roommate used to live next to a dude that had two sons, one of which we called Creeper. Dude was probably like 10 and every time we went out front to smoke he would come out and talk to us. I kind of felt bad for him because he clearly had no friends. His dad was always at work and his brother played Xbox all day. At the same time he was really rude. The thing is he was always asking to come in 
and we had to explain how weird it would look for two fully grown men to invite a young boy in their house. It got to the point where he would knock on our window when we were inside and asking us to come out, and he would start talking to us through a window. A closed window with our blinds down, lived in an apartment complex. Our front door faced the patio balconies of the apartments across the driveway. One of the patio sliding doors always had a silhouette of a person standing in at the door, looking out. It was always in the same place, in the same position, at all hours of the day, so after several months living there I decided it was a cardboard cutout in the window. The large patio sliding door was adorned with outdoor party lights that were always on. About a year after living there, I'd gotten used to the cardboard cutout silhouette always being there and didn't think much about it. One early morning, maybe 5 a.m., as it was still dark outside, I went to take the trash out. Imagine my shock when the party lights started flashing off and on. I looked up to see what was going on and the cardboard cutout was moving. I could see its arm moving as it was flicking the switch up and down. I realized that the silhouette was in fact not a cardboard cutout, but rather a person who was always in the window, always watching everything going on outside. To this day, I don't know why the person was flashing the lights, perhaps to gain my attention. But it was definitely creepy to think that for the last year, this mysterious silhouette was just a neighbor quietly watching everything. One of my neighbors faked seizures in order to guilt me into looking after him. He then started trying to touch me inappropriately during them. When I turned him down and refused to look after him anymore, he did not take it very well. He painted a picture of him hanging me, set it alight, and left it on my doorstep. When police were called, he said that I had broken into his flat, killed his pet rat, stole his painting, and set it alight myself. His pet rat was a wild rat he'd lured into his own flat and brained with a hammer. He'd then spent half of his time out in our shared garden digging holes at which point I put up a security camera so the landlord knew it wasn't me. Then one day, some builders next door woke him up at 4 p.m. and he snapped, started screaming at them, then when they refused to stop, slashed all four tires of their van, stabbed one of them in the leg with their own screwdriver, and stabbed another neighbor's dog, before setting his whole flat on fire and fleeing. I never saw him again but someone decided to give my name and address to every homeless person in the city saying I was a prostitute who would do anal for Mamba. Suffice to say, I moved shortly after that. Edit. Builder and dog made full recoveries. For a long time, the neighbor behind my family's house was very odd while I was growing up. He was an older guy with gray hair and a perpetual thousand-yard stare. Sometimes he'd be in his garage and meticulously touching all of his tools, petting the hatchet, fondling screwdrivers and hammers. For a long time I was sure he was secretly a serial killer. My dad asked him for some tools once, didn't get a reply back but got a whole toolbox a few moments later as the guy never said a word, just staring off into the pines and smiling the whole time. He also had weird habits of mowing his lawn in the middle of the night or doing his gardening in pitch black at 3 a.m. He usually kept to himself and never left his property. A few years after I had moved out, I met my neighbor's son and he explained it all. My neighbor was a war veteran, Almost completely blind and chemical warfare had burned his throat, so he couldn't speak. He knew the limits of his property so he never left and would use his hands as his eyes to find various tools and do household maintenance. It made it a bit less creepy and much more depressing. The poor guy is essentially locked in his own body, trapped on his property with barely enough of his senses left to function. 
He apparently considers my dad his best friend, since he's the only person to actually attempt to interact with him outside of his close family. My dad's next door neighbor. Such a list of creepy or weird. He put bear traps in his haystack to catch the neighborhood kids who had been playing in it. He filled another neighbor's driveway with a truckload of gravel as revenge for them fencing their own property. Neighborhood legend says he was responsible for all the nails scattered in the road that were always turning up in people's tires. But the worst was when I was in middle school and my dad went away on business for a couple weeks, leaving me to watch the farm by myself. The neighbor couldn't help but notice the empty driveway, so he took up terrorizing me as a hobby for a bit. It started with nightly window tapping, then doorknob rattling, and then escalated into sabotage. Every morning I'd nervously step outside to go tend the animals, and find some new disaster that couldn't be easily explained away. The very worst was the morning I stepped outside and found all the chickens lined up along the side of a shed, evenly spaced, with their necks broken. A few were still moving a bit. Eventually my dad came home and blamed me, and or my dog for all the disasters. Claimed I was just terribly careless, had left the chicken yard unlatched, that my dog had gotten in and killed the chickens, all sorts of nonsense. I was only about 14 years old at the time, but I was old enough to know dogs don't pose their dinner in neat rows facing the back door. This guy at my apartment complex. I call him F that guy guy. Whenever I walk my dogs and he's out walking, he will full on stop and face me and stare. He could be 200 yards away. If he sees me, stops, faces me and won't stop until I'm out of sight. I've complained to the front office, but I know it's fruitless. He isn't hurting anyone and he has the right to be outside like the rest of us. So I stopped complaining and started F with him. When he stops and stares, I take a selfie with him in the background. That way, if he is a creep and murders me in my sleep, at least the cops will have a history of his creepiness. I had an upstairs neighbor who was a 65, 70-year-old chain-smoking alcoholic. Her name was Betty, the most crabby, hateful, and cantankerous old cunt you've ever had the displeasure of meeting. Emphysma, on oxygen, smoked three packs a day. Middle of my boy's B-Day party, she shows up at the door in her robe, invites herself in and proceeds to drink my stepmother's beer, whilst her old saggy shriveled tits hanging out of her robe. She drink hot Canadian mist whiskey, out of a 44 Oz tumbler with a G-damn straw. One evening, she'd asked if I'd pick her up some groceries. When I went to the store, I did my shopping and came home to a huge mess of trash, ashes, liquor, and blood at the bottom of the stairs. So I hoof it up to see what the hell happened. And when she opened the door, she was skinned up like a walking beef jerky. Both elbows, nose, chin, forehead, and both knees. So... Kinda shocked, I asked her, God and Betty, are you all right? Without a bit of hesitation, she says, Satori, Satori, I'm a tough old bitch. Twice in six months, she got in a straight up fist fight with her daughter in the parking lot of the apartment complex. Somehow neither went to jail. Yeah, crazy Betty was something else. Thanks for listening. If you like our work, do subscribe because your support helps us keep this channel alive.